Hi, Galen Kranz again. This time I've moved to Berkeley and I discovered the Alexander Technique. I uh, moved to Berkeley in 1975 and I was working on a major book called The Politics of Park Design, complaining to a research assistant about all the pain from bending over books and papers on a conventional height table. And I mentioned that, oh, maybe someday I would find some sort of special coach and learn how to recalibrate every ordinary movement and find a way to move that didn't make pain for me. And I said, when this book's done, she said, oh, you might not have to wait for the book to be done. She knew a young woman who had just graduated from the Alexander Training School in San Francisco. Would I like to meet her? And long and the short of it is, I met her, I had a lesson, and I was stunned because it was very gentle. There was no manipulation involved. And yet at the end of that session, I was without pain. I was as pain-free as any osteopathic adjustment had ever um, made me feel. I wanted to know more about what was going on here, and I started having regular lessons with her. Then she connected me with another teacher who had professional experience, quasi-professional experience as a swimmer. So I even had Alexander lessons in the swimming pool, combining two of my worlds. And it went on like this for about four or five years of having private lessons twice a week. And then I moved to New York because mid-career I got a special fellowship and I went to film school in New York City. And so I worked more intensively with a New York teacher who, um, right towards the end of my year in New York, uh, gave me 10 lessons in a row that is, a lesson a day for 10 days in a row. And that had a huge impact. It didn't just manage my pain. For the first time, I actually improved my physical structure. My spine got straighter, and I could sense it. That was a major turning point. We did another 10-day sequence, and again, I could feel my spine actually getting straighter not just managing the pain, not just eliminating pain, but actually improving the physical structure. So I returned to Berkeley, resolved to continue at this level of intensity, and that really meant that I was going to have to train, enroll in a training program. As you might imagine, it was uh, not easy to make a commitment to being half-time in a school. Well, I myself was a professor teaching full-time and doing research. So I ended up deciding to find a topic where the body and the environment come together. But I'll talk a little bit more about that later. The most exciting thing that happened to me by joining the training school was in the first semester, my spine improved 13 degrees. Fortunately, my one of my early Alexander teachers, Joanne Somerville, the one who also taught me in water, recommended that I get an x-ray before I entered the training class. And I'm really grateful that she made that suggestion because now I have on record that I had an 80 degree curve and bingo, after my first term in class, you know, getting regular, 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 regular reinforcement of a new way of being, I had a 13 degree curve. I mean, a 67 degree curve, which is a 13 degree improvement. Meantime, I, another great thing that happened in my Berkeley years was that I got a friend with scoliosis. So we had so much to share. It was like really wonderful to be able to talk about all the particular little aches and pains and issues and dressing issues and various weirdnesses. So that was really, really nice to have um, a companion. She was pursuing yoga as her way to deal with scoliosis. She had a curve even greater than my 80-degree curve, approaching 90. And she was using uh, Iyengar-style yoga and was very serious about it, had weekly work and classes and so forth. And she introduced me to therapeutic yoga, um, 
with Tony Montez, and I found that really, really helpful. However, uh, the big group classes where you don't get individual instruction for your strange curves and asymmetries and whatnot, I think are harmful. And in fact, well, while my spine got 13 degrees straighter, nothing, um, nothing did work like that for my friend. So she actually went to India, worked regularly um, for many years, and still never got the same kind of change that I did, because I think yoga is, tends to be more external and working on the form rather than simultaneously working on um, directing, lengthening, opening, creating space, and all the things that really help um, the Alexander technique expand and straighten bodies. Basically, I think yoga is very, is very powerful and it might work for people with smaller curves, but with the big curve, the power of some of the leverage that you can create in yoga is too great for our asymmetrical structures. And I myself have two injuries that have never been able to be healed from working um, in, with yoga. On the other hand, it's also, you know, the therapeutic yoga gave me the introduction to fantastic experience of musculature that I, I in my body that I'd never felt. It's, it, it has its place, but I'm very um, cautious about it. You, you know from an earlier video uh, that I think Tai Chi is a far safer uh, form of fitness. So, Alexander uh, did a world of good for me. One, the most important thing is that my body could change. Not just manage pain, but actually improve, get better, change structurally. Two, it taught me to understand the role that psychology, my psychology, plays in poor posture. So I got an internal way to work on posture and structure. Third, it gave me a tool a set of standards for quality movement that I could apply to any new system that I wanted to learn after that. And, we, and I did learn a lot of systems after that, as you'll see in the following um, segment. Um, with this tool, I could judge uh, what was working for me and what wasn't working. It can be applied to everything, so it's, it's very powerful broadly applicable, really valuable. And finally, fourth, for me, it helped me develop a, a, an entire new, entirely new academic field, which I've called body conscious design. Up to this point, any work on the body was about the body as a cipher, as a symbol, like as a symbol for um, attitudes towards women or attitudes towards uh, death or attitudes towards war or at so forth and so on. There wasn't enough on the experience of being in a lived body and how that might affect the design of the environment that we meet with our body. And so I was able to write a new book and launch a new field. The book is The Chair, Rethinking culture, body, and design, and the field um, you can look into if you want at bodyconsciousdesign.com. In the next video, we'll talk about how the Alexander Technique not only helped me learn new disciplines, but also helped me invent an entirely new field, academic field, which I call body conscious design. Okay? Check it out.